On this week's episode of Movie Hilo, we're talking HDA, CGI jump scares, and angel winged prostitutes. We better keep our mouths shut. This is David M. Rosenthal's Jacob Slatter. Something I think that you never grow out of is like Sunday nights are always kind of depressing. Yeah. It's something about, I think like when you're a kid and it's, I got to wake up and go to school tomorrow, Mm -hmm. that like little bit of depression and anxiety that you feel. Yeah. That never goes away. Yeah. I don't know why that's the case. It's, I mean, obviously we got to wake up and go to work tomorrow. That's that's why. But it's part of being an adult. It's just something about Sunday nights. They're not as they're a little deflating. Um, was that enough banter? <laughs> a witty banter. Banter some more. Do some more have banter. We met our witty banter quota. We've got um, presently we have Jackie Brown on in the background. Yeah, this is such a great. This movie, movie always reminds me of like the day we moved. Yeah, I do remember when we moved to Revere. Yeah. We remember. Putting and I remember when we on. first moved to Salem. We were watching High Fidelity. Yeah. We ordered like a pizza for the first time, and it was like, "What's the good food around here? We don't know." Something about like when you first move to a place, like the first thing you set up, or at least the way that we've done it, the first thing you set up is the living room. Like you set the living room up. You have to the bedroom, obviously, too. But like. The bear, like, as far as, you know, boxes are everywhere. You still have shit to unpack, but you want to be able to, like, sit down somewhere and put on a TV. Mm. Um, maybe that's maybe that's a less and less important to the younger generation. Maybe I it's just, know. like, carry around an iPad and live your life. But that was the thing, is that, like, we'd get there. Even if you didn't have, like, internet set up yet, you, like, had a DVD player. You threw right. something on in the background. Right. So it's funny. It's one of the most, arguably one of the most important parts of the household to get ready. Yeah. Like, so you can watch TV while you're eating. Let's entertain ourselves. <laughs> Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Movie High Low, a podcast discussing the best and worst that cinema has to offer. Offa. Jimmy Hoffa. You dumb motherfuckers. Welcome to another episode of Movie High Low, a podcast discussing the best and worst that cinema has to offer. I'm Dom. And this is Dee. And this week we are, this week is an interesting episode um, because, like I said last week, I wanted to enter into this with an open mind. But this week's movie is Jacob's Ladder, the remake, the 2019 remake Directed by David M. Rosenthal, released uh, August 23rd, 2019. It is a low episode, uh, 3.4 rating on IMDb, 5% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, um, and a 1.7 rating on Letterboxd. I know that it didn't get good reviews and that it's not a well-received movie, but upon viewing it, I have to say I don't feel that it was that bad overall. You know, I... So the first like half hour into the movie, I remember thinking in my head like this isn't good, but this isn't as bad as I was anticipating. No, not at all. And I actually, well, I have some highs. I actually have more highs than lows for this movie. So I but, guess I won't get into specifics. But until what this I was time. gonna say though is that then, after another half hour of the movie, I was like, oh, okay, I, I kind of. I mean, yeah. On here. One of the things I wrote for a low was I'm not sure how I feel about the twist at the end of it. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll jump into that. We'll we'll talk a little bit about. Let me do a quick synopsis for anyone who hasn't seen the film. Jacob Singer, working as a trauma surgeon in the war in Afghanistan, is shocked the day that his brother Isaac ends up on his operating table after sustaining fatal wounds from a botched snatch and grab mission. One year later, Jacob has returned home seeking solace with his wife and infant son and a career as a VA hospital physician. But when Isaac, thought to have been killed in action, mysteriously reemerges, Jacob's world begins to crumble as he struggles to decipher reality from a post-traumatic stress-induced hallucination. Um, so here's the thing about this movie. I feel like a remake, when it's done well, should be able to stand on its own feet without needing comparison to the original, right? Like this should be able, if it's a, if it's a well-made remake, it should be able to just be considered on its own merit. The problem is, is that I don't think this is a really good film. And because of that, I don't think that it's going to be difficult not to compare it to the highly, highly superior original film, which I would say to anybody, if you haven't seen it, you you should absolutely see the original Jacob's Ladder. And we're going to probably, or at least I know I'm going to spoil some of it for you. So if you've not seen the original Jacob's Ladder, by all means, check it out. It's an awesome movie. Um, Stop listening right now, watch the movie, and then come back to this later. Exactly. I just feel like if you're going to remake a movie, you got to have a, a reason for doing it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, are you are you going to are you going to reimagine it in a way that makes it um, more interesting to a contemporary audience, or are you going to take some of the same ideas that are there and then and then add some more flavor or nuance to it? Like, like if you're going to do it, you have to have a reason for doing it, other mm-hmm. than something new to bring to the table, some, a fresh reimagining. Exactly. 
And that was the thing with this was watching it. It was, I'm like, I don't really, I mean, we'll get, we'll get more into it as we go through the highs and the lows, but I'm like, I don't really think that they had a whole lot of, um, a point of view on this story or, or anything, anything new, new to bring to the table. Right? Yeah. And I think that's probably the biggest sin that this movie creates is yeah. that it's got nothing. It's probably taking it from the standpoint of like, this is a story that is to be told and that there's more than one person that has these experiences probably that, you know, you can tell it through different people's perspectives and that's more what they were trying to do. And then, you know, anything that is similar, like the CGI head spinning stuff that happens, it's oh, like yeah. one could argue that they're just paying homage rather than, just trying to rip it off or you know I don't know well we should get into I mean because it's a low episode I think it's 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 appropriate that we start with the lows so I'm just going to get my first low the first note that I wrote when we were watching this movie was this movie is in a big rush and that's I think the first problem that I have with it is that the pacing it, 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 it the movie itself but it felt a, long so I don't know well that's and that's the thing is that this movie comes in under an hour and a half. This movie, I think, I think by the time we hit the ending credits, it's like an hour and 25 minutes in, but it feels so much longer than it is. And a big part of that so is how that... how could you say it's in a rush because, then? Because there's no characterization, okay? We never get time to actually learn about or care about Jacob or his brother Isaac, either of those characters. And don't even get started on the wife because she's a total non-entity in the movie. Like, the movie starts, you know... Super fast. We we have this kind of opening credit teaser thing that happens, which I th- actually thought was kind of cool, but we'll get back to that in a second. And then we show that Jacob is a surgeon in in Afghanistan, and you know within like the first four minutes, he's already getting like that super cliche cheesy you know Skype. Oh, I'm pregnant. Let me show you the piss yeah, test. Yeah, it was a little bit. Like yeah. I mean, like like we and that's literally all we get is okay. He's he's a surgeon. He's in Afghanistan. His wife is pregnant. You get all that information right away. Now the, the brother's on, on the operating table. Boom. We're back into his real life. Or now he's back home Present a year later. Day, yeah. It's like everything just feels like it's happening so fast <clears throat> without us actually getting time to want to care about her, like to get invested in anything. Like now the original Jacob's Ladder, I think, is a much slower burn. It doesn't feel as long because mm. it gets you invested in the characters and the story so that you can care about everything. I feel like this movie is just rapid fire just happening and none of the fuses are connecting even like something like i wrote down that i think the action is too abrupt like there's one point where he's working in the in the va hospital and like this guy just starts convulsing out of nowhere mm-hmm. you know uh, later in the movie there's yeah, a point he's supposed to probably be on hda or whatever right well they, they the whole thing with the drug but what i'm saying is that things are happening so fast in the movie that it's never giving you time to like set pace with the story you know, I remember there's one scene at, like a little later in the movie where they pull up to um, it's him, Jacob and his brother are in a car and they pull up to where they're thinking they're going to meet um, this pharmacist. And like as soon as they get out of the car, someone's shooting at them. Mm. And it's like things are just happening so fast that you never feel like you're settled into the story. I don't know. Did you am I just making this shit I mean, up or do you feel the same I, way? I guess I didn't particularly feel that way, but I can see what you mean when you talk about it now a little bit. Yeah. I just think things are happening way too fast. And 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 the fact that the the original movie is a slower burn, it doesn't, even though that movie is a little bit longer and things take a little bit more time to get up and running, it's good because, especially in the first act, it's helping you invest in the story. And this is, this kind of leads into the, to the next thing that I thought was a huge problem in this movie. And it's the plot device of the unreliable narrator. Okay. Now, this is something that people use this. This has been used in tons and tons of movies. I have no problem with the unreliable narrator as a concept, right? Like, Fight Club or Memento, like you have these characters who you know that you can't necessarily trust what's being presented to you. Mm -hmm. Um, But the thing about this movie is that it's revealed way too early in the story that nothing that Jacob is seeing is real. The original movie starts out with Tim Robbins. He's in the Vietnam War, right? And you see that there's this event that's happening in where they're all, him and a bunch of other soldiers sitting around and there's an attack that's about to happen and they're all behaving very erratically. And you don't know exactly what's happening. And we'll constantly be kind of flashing back to that throughout the original movie. So now, in the forward narrative of that of that movie, he's a postman. He lives in New York City. You get to know a little bit of his routine. You get to know that he's got this, um, his girlfriend, Jesse, mm-hmm. that he's with. It's you, you start to get little bits of information about the fact that he's, he's divorced. He had another wife. He had another family. And he actually lost a son who's played by Macaulay Culkin in that movie. Like a very tragic event happened. So you're getting a lot of information about that character 
and you're just kind of seeing him live his day, you know, his, his life day to day, like a normal life of a regular postman. And then weird things start happening. OK, there's a car that almost runs him over. And in the car, you see this weird looking demon mm-hmm. with um, the weird spinny head. Yeah, with that crazy face, like one of the greatest shots in that movie. So the thing that's happening in that movie is that you're being presented with a real world, a grounded reality where fantastical things are happening. So when you're watching that film, you're like, okay, I believe the world that I'm in, but now I'm seeing that there's there's a heightened reality or strange things that are happening within this world. The way this movie starts, like there's at least four occasions in this movie where this Jacob Singer is talking to a character that immediately disappears. Or, you know, someone's like, oh, that guy wasn't there. Who are you talking about? So it's like right from the beginning of this movie, it's like, okay... We know everything that we're seeing is not real, and all we're going to do now is sit back and have to wait for the twist to happen. Right. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that to me is a problem, is that, like, the movie's not giving you a grounded reality to invest in at the jump. It's just literally telling you, like, from the beginning of the movie, like, nothing you're seeing is real. So just sit back and wait until we tell you what's been real or not real the whole time. And I feel like that's a problem. That That doesn't make for a compelling story to watch because you're just sitting back waiting for the twist yeah i guess i didn't necessarily look at it the same way like that from jump you're supposed to believe that he's imagining it all i mean i was oh actually a little bit surprised when the twist came really i mean a little bit i I mean i kind of expected it but i also was a little bit like oh okay so like basically it's like the complete role reversal like everything that the isaac character was in the beginning was actually him you know, I, I was like, I mean, it felt kind of silly, though, too. It was kind of, I don't know if I think it's a good twist or not. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I wrote a lot about the twist lately. I mean, we'll, we'll get to it, but or unless you want to talk about it now. I'm just saying that I think that the if you sit down and you watch this movie knowing the original film, you know that there's going to be a twist. And that's OK, especially if you accept that this is a remake. But the problem that I really have with this movie in the way that it's done is that it doesn't ever let you know who the characters are, care about them, or feel like there's parts of the world that you believe. You're a surgeon, is that right? Yes. I'm a trauma surgeon. I work at the VA. Okay. So you would agree with me that if there were a collision between a human body and a moving train, there might be some physical evidence, right? You think I'm making this up? Another problem I have was the callbacks to the original film. So this, none of them, in my opinion, none, nothing. What, the weird spinning head well, shots and Just all that? All, everything that they tried to do from the original the ice movie. bath. That's the first one I wrote down. The ice bath scene, it seems totally perfunctory. Like there, it happens so fast in this version of the movie and it makes little sense as to why it's happening. And then the other thing that I thought was so funny, because I mean, again, this is a, a scene from the original movie where he goes to a party and he has like this meltdown and, and is freaking out. And the devil out. is fucking his girlfriend. The devil's fucking his girlfriend <laughs> in that scene, which is like one of the coolest scenes in that movie. But when he gets home, Jesse, his, his girlfriend, is like yelling at him because she's like, I can't believe it. You embarrassed me. I've never seen anyone behave like that, blah, 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 blah. And then she takes his temperature and she like literally reads the temperature and is like, oh my God, it says 106. She calls the doctor and she's like, what do I do? And the doctor's telling him he'll die on the way to the hospital. You got to get him in a tub. So it's this whole prolonged scene of her forcing him to get in the tub. Mm -hmm. She's running up and down the hallway and knocking on everyone's door to get ice. Mm -hmm. And then they're all holding him. It's like this big traumatic scene Mm -hmm. of them holding him in the the bathtub and him Mm -hmm. freaking out. Um, And this movie, it just happens so fast. Yeah, no, I I see what you're saying. It's like 30 seconds. And then the other part that I thought was so funny is that, like I said, in that in that original scene, she's in an apartment complex and she's knocking on everyone's Uh door asking for ice. They got 10 bags of like ice. Just in the up, like what? Well, some people do. Were I mean, they having a cookout the next day? Some people like, do. Where the fuck did all that ice come from? I don't know. Some people have bags of ice. Just and stuff bags of ice, just chilling out. Maybe they entertain a just lot. Just in I don't case know. you got a drugged up brother who's going to no, show up. No, maybe they entertain a lot. Who knows? I, that's what I'm saying. They must have been having a cookout the next day because I'm like, they had a the nice house. He's a doctor. I mean, yeah, they probably host fucking fancy parties. We gotta get him in the water. We gotta get some ice. Go get ice. Right. Get me as much ice as possible. Go. And the other thing, and this is another callback to the original film, this one really bothered me a lot, was that there's this whole angels versus devils speech that happens, right? In the original Jacob's Ladder, it's such a great moment because it happens like in the third act of the movie. It's this whole speech where Danny Aiello, who is um, Jacob's chiropractor, is explaining to him, the guy, what's the guy's name? Um, Meister Eckhart. Eckhart saw devils and his theory was that the only part of you that burns in hell is the part of you that won't let go. Yeah, won't let go of your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you're fighting to hold on to your life, 
you're going to see devils tearing your life away from you. He's like, but once you've made your peace and you accept it, the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth. It's a great speech. Yeah. And it's like the whole key to unlock the mystery of the original film, right? And this movie, in the first 20 minutes, they just like stick it in the mouth of the psychiatrist who just kind of says it out of nowhere where he's like, oh, I think I'm in hell. And he's like, well, actually, hell is... Blah, blah. And he goes into that whole speech and it's just like, you guys are literally just sticking it in here because it was in the original film and it doesn't organically make sense. He thinks he's going to hell. Jacob, the only thing that burns in hell is the part of yourself that refuses to let go. Remember Meister Eckhart? He said, if you are frightened of dying and you're holding on, and you will see devils tearing your life apart. Maybe the reason that I feel like I have more highs than lows and maybe actually feel like I liked this movie better than you is partially because the original Jacob's Ladder isn't as important to me as it was to you. I and guess. and you know that movie so much better than I do. So maybe. it's like you're looking at it through a different lens than I am. I'm I'm looking at it like I get the movie it came from, it's derived from, but at the same time I'm not so beholden or know that movie so well or, you know, dialogue wise or every little thing every little idiosyncratic thing that I'm going to be comparing in the way that you probably are watching it. Well, I, and again, I, I, I feel like I would compare it less if the movie was good enough on its own merit. That's the thing, is watching the movie, I'm like, it's well, not... one of the things I said I liked, I, I liked the shots too, and some of the, like, um, I had written down, like, I remember there was a shot when he's going down into the subway and the escalators, and, like, the way the lights are, like, evenly framed on either side of his head, and, like, the entrance to the subway tunnel is perfectly rounded around his head like a halo. Um, and then the shot, the aerial shot from above when he's first coming across the guy that's under the, the homeless guy under the bridge that's warning him, you know, they're coming after you, whatever, it's raining. Um, and the way it looks from above in that shot, like some of the shots were actually really interesting and looked really cool. I don't think the cinematography was a problem. I wouldn't say it was great, but I, I definitely, the movie has a nice... Um, you know, look to it. It looks good. The liked, actors put, are all pretty good. I put that I liked the vanishing people. Like, and again, this is before when you start seeing the people vanishing. Is before he knows his brother. He's. I think he's heard at this point that his brother's alive, but he hasn't actually seen that he's alive yet for himself. So, like, there's already weird shit happening before Isaac truly reenters the, the picture. But the problem is they don't. They don't make. They don't spend enough time with Jacob to understand that there's something wrong with him that would make him see the world this way. Again, in the original movie, we understand. Something happened to him that we don't fully understand, and there's a reason that he's starting to see these weird things. And is it is he having a nervous breakdown? Is it a, is it an effect of drugs? Like we know that there's something wrong, we just don't know what it is. In this movie, other than the fact that yeah, I guess they, they the only thing they present is maybe post traumatic stress from from the scene when his brother gets pulled into the operating room. Other than that, there's nothing that would make you feel like, well, why is this guy all fucked up? What is he? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, why would he be It's probably because we're not supposed to know yet until later when you realize that he's the one that truly is But that's, up. again, I don't mean to keep reiterating this, but it's like, but that's part of the problem for me is that now the movie is starting on this level of, I can't believe anything I'm seeing. Everything I'm seeing is false. So now I'm sitting here being like, when are we going to get to the part where you tell me what's really happening? You know, whereas I didn't feel that way at the original movie. I felt like they were giving me a reality and then they were going to, and then they pull the rug on you eventually, but you're believing everything that you're seeing up to a certain point. You know, I, I just I don't think it's a bad way to start a movie is to immediately be like nothing that you're being shown right now matters yet because it's not real. But what exactly was it that indicated to you that this isn't real? Everything from the beginning when he's seeing these weird digital fucking ghosts running around and um, like just all of that shit that's happened. Like, the, like within the first 10 minutes of the movie, they're already doing the hallucinatory shit that doesn't really make and any sense. And that wasn't the case in the original movie. It happens a little bit later where you've where you've gotten your bearings where you feel like, OK, I'm in New York City with a postman who was a veteran. Okay. You know, like it felt it happens more, too soon in this movie. It's I, I that was the thing. This movie is in a big rush. That was yeah. what I wrote. It's in yeah. a big fucking All rush. Right, I can see your point. It's just trying to like, boom, here's everything. And it's like, OK, slow down and tell me a story. Don't just be in a big rush to like play karaoke with the original Jacob's Ladder because it's not effective this way. Mm. Um, And and. The other thing, and just to go back to that speech, the whole like devil versus angels thing, the other thing that really bothered me about that was now that speech almost has no place in this movie because the difference was the twist in the original Jacob's Ladder is that he's dying, is that the whole movie he's is the, is the internal struggle to try and live or eventually die. 
So that speech means a lot. Like you're 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 fighting the fight right now to stay alive, and that's why you're seeing demons pulling your life away. Right. But if you accept it, you'll you, your child who died will be the angel that brings you to heaven. Mm-hmm. In this movie, that's not what's that's not what's happening. It's not an internal struggle to survive. The guy's not dead the entire movie. So what's the point of that speech have to do with anything other than just to stick no, it I in know, there? I know, and it happens too early. It's like there's no real. I don't know, reason for the doctor to be saying it in that scene. It's kind of like, okay, like I know that this is basically dialogue from the original movie, but why are you saying it now? Yeah. I mean, that's, again, that's just, that's just how, and again, I, I appreciate what you're saying that like, I guess if you come to this movie knowing the original Jacob's Ladder, it may be harder to to take it at face value, but I'm sorry. It's a, it's a famous movie and it's a great movie. It's like, it, that'd be like saying if we're going to remake The Godfather. It's like, well, what do you, you want to pretend like this other thing didn't exist and, and and just look at this like it's totally different? Like there's no, unless the movie was so good that it defied comparison, there's no way not to look at this movie like it's, you got to compare it to that original film. Right. Um, the other thing is, you know, another huge low for me is just the awful CGI in this movie. Mm-hmm. It's so bad. The demons look terrible. I'm going to sound like an old man here, but like Adrian Lynn used great practical effects. Right. I mean, I always think practical. I'm always one that thinks you know, practical looks better. It just looks even better. if even if it looks like a puppet, it looks better. It's like it's, it's real. It was something right. that was photographed. It's it not actually this, looks scary because yeah. it's like this there, looks like this could be real. There's a great like the, the scene we were talking about before where, where they're at the party and there's like the whole like strobing effect. There's like the strobe that's going on mm-hmm. and she's dancing and mm-hmm. it looks like she's getting fucked by the devil. Mm-hmm. And you have the great like close up shots of the devil's wings flapping. Mm-hmm. And at one point, um, Elizabeth Pina like the the horn pops out of Isn't her mouth. Pena? Pena, whatever. Pena. Elizabeth Pena. Um, rest Pena. in peace. I know she died a couple of years ago. Uh, the horn pops out of her mouth. It's like all that stuff looks so much scarier because it's practical. Right. I agree. All the stuff in this, every time we see some stupid digital face thing. There's so many movies since have come and got I mean, like that's, that's the way of everything now. Like all these movies that try to be scary horror movies, psychological thrillers, like in the past 15 years are all guilty of the CGI gimmick. And it's just, every time I see it, personally, I'm taken out of it. And I'm always mad when I hear about movies like World War Z that made all this, or uh, it cost all this money to make. And I'm like, why? Because if these computer generated images that to me look like shit, like these zombie mountains, you know, climbing walls to get over the other side, like it looks fake. Like that was tons of money. Like I feel like why wouldn't you go with real actors or like something, a practical effect of some sort, it would actually look more believable and way cool and probably cost less money. I mean, I just don't get the idea that people think that CGI looks better. I think a big problem with... I'm sure George Lucas would make the argument well, sure. for it. And it's like, you know what, dude? Sure. And it, and again, I think CGI in and of itself is not... It's a, it's a tool. It's something that can be used well if it's... I mean... I think a big problem of what happens with movies like this... I think like it this, never looks good. Well, I don't care what movie it's, it's in. I can tell when it's CGI yeah, and I'm immediately taken out. But if it's out. an enhancement, if it's not if it's not the... It's immediately less scary to me. I'm like, okay. If it's the pepper, if it's not the steak, it, it makes it a different thing. You know what I mean? Like, I think what happens is, is that movies like this, to do practical effects actually takes more time in production, right? You have to build the, the prop. You have to... Get you know if it's a puppet or something you have to get puppeteers. That's probably one of the biggest reasons. It becomes, it's just easier to go with CGI. Let's just shoot it and then we'll do it in post. It's like that is it's a lazy way to approach filmmaking, and we've gotten so used to being able to do that now with filmmaking that it really cheats. You know, I I absolutely agree with that. But again, I'm just I, I know I sound like an old man when I talk like that. It's just one of those things where I just think it's I think it's no, more but effective. I agree with that. You know, so anyways, all the CGI was was kind of a bummer. Um, I know I'm just like regurgitating all of the things I hate about this movie but I had a very visceral reaction to this movie watching it because I really honest to God sat Loved down well not only that, but I wanted to sit down and be like I'm not gonna um, you know read the reviews of any of this stuff like I know I know it you was don't poorly be received I didn't want to be influenced I just wanted to watch it and be like just sit down and watch it and view it with an open mind and that's why like I was saying at the beginning of the movie for the first like maybe 20 or 30 minutes I was like this isn't as bad as they say mm-hmm. and then as it went on and on I was like alright this really they're not bringing anything new to the table here. Like, it's not horrible, but they're just not... It doesn't justify its own existence. You know right. what I mean? Why, why bother remaking it just to do the same thing? Do you want to take a quick... Let's take a quick break and we'll come back. I got a couple of stray notes and then I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let you talk because I know you said you have more highs than you have lows for this. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to hear what your highs were and see if any of ours correspond. All right. Or, uh, or where we landed with this. So we'll be right back. 
Where do you want to go? Home? This is your home. You're dead. Dead. Oh, it's hurt my back. I'm not dead. What are you then? I'm alive. All right, um, so I know, I like I said, I've just been kind of pontificating about all the things I don't like about this movie. I only got a couple of small stray notes left. Um, do you have any lows you want to get into first? or? I mean, I didn't have a lot of lows. The um, twist, you I said. I mentioned them already. Yeah, because I'm just not sure how I felt about it. But I mean, you weren't surprised by it. I was a little bit, I was kind of like, oh. I mean, like, I kind of, I was and I wasn't surprised by it. Like, oh, it makes sense that it would be like the role reversal because the girlfriend slash wife character was first with the Isaac character. And then later on you get that, you know, she ended up getting with the brother character, Jacob, who I I think we're led to believe that it's after they supposedly think Isaac is dead. Right. Is it that kind of thing? Like that she got with him? No, I think it's, uh, well, the way it's presented in the movie again, and there's so little there that it's hard to, distinguish but what I'm gathering is that it would have been before he went to war because when he's in war is that that oh, that opening scene when they show she that says she's f- pregnant yeah so at that point but, he's but already I with think her. even at that point he's supposed to be the brother it's like he's imagining that they're together and they and she even says in the end like the baby's not his it's Isaac's character like but that's because so, he never was with her right exactly so in the in the in the representation of the forward narrative of the movie as it's being presented before the twist I think again and again con- there's all conjecture because the movie didn't want to spend any time developing that love triangle it just wanted to use it for dramatic effect without really developing it but what I would have gathered from this first watching of it is that he would have been with her before he went to war and then when they show the flashback Jacob later would've. Jacob Jacob would have like she's saying I'm pregnant you're going to be a daddy and then later when they show the flashback of the wedding and Isaac gets drunk and like, right. you it's see them, a- but it's actually Jacob that was right. the one that got drunk. But he, and- they're in their, they're in their um, military uniforms. Uh-huh. So it's kind of like they're getting ready to go off type mm-hmm. of thing. So I don't think that they would have either, any of either of them would have been deployed yet. But again, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking out my ass because the movie didn't want to spend any time. Well, I was just saying because of that. the fact that they share the girlfriend character, the, twist the narrative thread, it, it makes sense that it would be, oh, it was actually the brother. Like, I mean, she's like the key that like binds the two together. Yeah. Or, I don't know. So it's like, it wasn't that surprising, I guess. But I just wasn't sure. I'm like, is this a good thing? Is it a bad Or does this... I, I put that as one of the highs and we can talk about it a the little bit after. The twist was? Well, I, and again, not, not a high that the twist was good. I gave them credit that they tried to do a different twist. Like that they didn't just do the exact same twist as the original. So... I, I give them credit for that. The problem is, is that they didn't do it to good effect. You know, I like the twist well, itself. Well, my whole thing is like, if it was in fact the other brother, what was the other brother doing when he thought it was actually him? Like, that's, I, that's where Me. I get a little, like, I don't know, like, if it was actually the Isaac character that was with her and got her pregnant and all this and that, and not the Jacob character, like Isaac was actually married to her and not her, not him, then what was the actual Isaac doing? So I, think, I don't know. Like, I think, I think what the movie... When the, when the twist happens, and again, like what what happens? You're living your brother's reality. Like, how do you have that experience unless you're your brother? Like, I don't know. But he wasn't. That the whole the whole point I is know that he was everything that you were you have seen up to this point. You're supposed to now understand that, you know, it, it's flipped. It's that he he pro, he wasn't. You know, Jacob wasn't really a surgeon. It would have been Isaac who was really the surgeon. Right. Like, it, Jacob's you, the fuck up. The one who ends right. Up. Right, so that's the whole point. Is that like, like when he when there's that there's that really quick shot early in the movie where he's in the bar and he sees Isaac flirting with. Uh-huh. It would have been the alternate version. It would have been that he was the one flirting with her, Jacob, was. and Isaac would have been the one that got with her after. Yeah. Like, didn't work out with them. I guess yeah. again, it's convoluted, and the movie didn't want to spend any time to show you what that relationship would have looked like. Mm. And that I think is, uh, you know, it makes the twist a little bit less dramatic. And even like there's a, there's one line in the movie where at one point, once, once the revelation happens and you, and you're supposed to get that, okay, everything that's been Isaac or everything, I'm sorry, everything that's been Jacob is really Isaac and vice versa. There's a line where Jacob says to him, like, it was nice getting to live your life for a little while. And that could have been, really dramatic and powerful and like had some real emotional weight to it mm-hmm. if they had spent any time developing the shit before it's just kind of 
it just happens and then it's like it, it's cheating it doesn't it didn't earn any like emotional weight to it because so much of the movie just is phoning it in and trying to get give it to you as fast as possible without spending any time with these characters. Yeah. Um, Another low that I wrote down was the scene where he's having sex with a prostitute after he gets the oh drug from her, and it's just so corny. Like, okay, like the flashy effects and the black wings, and like I don't. And like, wasn't she the girl character? Wasn't she like supposed to be one of the surgeons in the beginning of the movie? I don't know. I it wasn't looked like sure. the same actress, and then like you see her later. She's and then, like a prostitute, and later. then and then he runs into her on the sidewalk and point. She's like, "Hey, honey," or whatever, and he's like, "Get away from me!" But it's like you recognize her from the earlier scenes right. where they're like colleagues of some sort, and then but she was like so like, it's was like a bit, or it begs the question like maybe she she actually was just a prostitute, but he imagined her in this different role or vice versa. I don't know, but it was just, it was just like really cornily put together and like for the effects and everything in that scene where they're yeah. fucking around, I'm like okay, it's, it's, it's like, really silly that part is yeah. really silly and and again I mean that's the whole devil versus angel thing well, I mean, it's trying to go for some of the effects the movie this remake is trying to mimic in some ways you can tell where it's trying to just flat out mimic the effects from the original movie you know what I mean mm-hmm. um and then right down to the ending credits where I'm like, okay, this looks like it's trying to be seven, oh. like to a T. Every it looks like David Fincher's since 1995, seven. like anything that's been quote unquote a thriller has tried to do the credits from seven, yeah. which is kind so. of a bummer. I don't know if you um, noticed that. Oh yeah, credits came oh, of course. Was that the opening credits like that too? I don't even remember. The opening credits were the ones, yeah, where they where it's got that kind of like um, like it's a it's film, but it's film that's being like run through a bathtub and scratched with razors. So it's like yeah. it's like the degenerative effect of film, mm-hmm. and they've just done that forever since mm-hmm. that movie mm-hmm. um a couple of random stray notes that i had as lows ridiculous random scenes there was just a lot of stupid scenes in this movie that i thought were like we actually ended up they're supposed to be scary but they ended up being kind of funny so like for instance i wrote down i just wrote down guy mopping floor mop blood. water is blood I know. <laughs> it's like oh, of course it is. oh no the fucking water's oh, blood i wrote that at one point Hold stupid on. um yeah the, the guy that like comes to warn him that he's imagining and he's like standing in the subway truck he's like your brother needs your help but right as he says help the train like runs him over yeah <laughs> and like I was like okay that's kind of silly but um and then I also like there's a part where it's like the trains are speeding by and you just see these shadowy silhouettes on the trains that are moving with the trains like as it goes over the tracks it looks like these apparitions well that was in the original film there's a yeah. great there's a lot of stuff that happens I'm sure it's just trying to do what was in it the is film. it is but like but not but but again to lesser effect in the original film they have the whole thing where like and this was kind of a cool idea of him being in the train station is kind of like you know uh, him descending or ascending from hell type of thing so when he's in the train station he sees a lot of these weird fucked up images and one of the things was the train almost hits him and then as the train's going by you see all of the passengers in the train that are just kind of shadowy figures walk to the back of the train to look at him as they're driving away and it was just a little there was just imagery that was so powerful in that movie that you know, it worked so effectively as a creepy horror film. But at the same time, what was so great about the original film is it worked It worked as a, as a creepy horror film, but it also worked as kind of like an existential drama about life and death. Like yes. there was, it was so much going on in it. Um, Silent Hill took a lot of its Based imagery. On the video game. It took, it took, but it took a lot of its imagery from Jacob's Ladder. Yeah. If you look at the Silent Hill games, mm. you know, the, because of because of how stark those images were and how scary some of that stuff was. And in this movie, it's kind of like, yeah, we're doing karaoke version of it. We're doing digital fucking shadows. Like, that's scary. Like, no, it's not. This is, this is a really cheap photocopy of something that's so much better. And I know it's 30 years old, but it's not old enough to feel like I don't know I'm, if you're I gonna do it you should do something new and add with something it. to right. it add something to it and that's I think the biggest sin of this movie is it just unnecessary it just didn't add anything to the conversation it didn't do anything um that exciting so um, you imagine the story in a modern land the other thing I wrote this down I just I thought this was kind of funny the fight when they do the flashback of the wedding and again you see that it's not really it's it's flipped it's it, you where, what happens is Isaac gets up and is lamenting about how he used to be with the girl first mm-hmm. and he's all drunk and shit. And then you realize later that it was actually Jacob who did that. But that scene, when it happened, I was just kind of laughing the whole time because it reminded me of the scene in The Wedding Singer when like the drunk brother, Steve Buscemi, gets up there. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, I'm a person too, Pop. You're a moron. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know why. It has nothing to do. I just reminded me of that <laughs> scene for some reason. It's funny. Um, I thought when they, so Hoffman at the very end of the movie, at the, the Hoffman who was the pharmacist, mm-hmm. At like the last 
20 seconds of the movie or like the last couple minutes of the movie is revealed to be the antagonist like he's been basically the the uh the drug the hda drug Mm -hmm. what you realize is that jacob has been on this drug hda and it's been it's been engineered for vets so that it would essentially what the idea is it's supposed to remove all of the negative memories all the bad memories and then jacob is saying like it doesn't remove them it replaces them with something worse which is cheesy it's not enough for the revelation or or the story to be complete. It's it's like they have to now make it be like the pharmacist is evil and he's been creating this drug and you know now the guy tries to shoot him and then there's the we terrible, help people we hurt people yeah and... it's so so stupid and then like when uh the overused self sacrifice jumping in front of the bullet like give me a fucking break mm-hmm. like that stuff is so fucking lame and outdated and cheesy i almost forgot about that part but yeah that's oh true that, i mean it's, it's so it is cliche it's like he's gonna jump in front of the bolt like well it, it, it should have never even gotten to that point because the story should have been strong enough to hold it up without it being like ha 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 the evil pharmacist you know that fucking bothered me and then the last thing i wrote was you know the gladiator last shot of walking through wheat field boo well i know because oh i my mean God. well you see that in the middle of the movie where it shows like the flashback when uh, when i think it's supposed to be when how many times we got to walk through a wheat field as heaven i mean really the jacob character it shows him losing his brother on the operating table and it's supposed to be like the original reason why he has the issues that he has and then it shows like immediately after his brother dies or whatever, or you think they've lost him, that they're younger now and they're both walking through this wheat field and you get like there's the older brother and the younger brother and it's like you get that it's supposed to be them. So when it happens at the end of the movie, you're like, okay, it's supposed to be like, like his happy the, place, you know, okay. back when he was young and innocent or whatever. All I'm trying to say is so why, it's like a bookend, I guess, why, why does every time someone die, they have to be in a wheat field? There's something very peaceful about wheat If fields. I fucking die and heaven's a wheat field, like send me to hell. Like <laughs> I don't want to, like that's the dumbest shit I could have. Like really, I'm just in a wheat field. This is supposed to, I just keep seeing fucking wheat fields. I'm, I'm done with the wheat fields as heaven. I think that's really silly. Mm. Um, that's all I got. I, I, uh, those are all my, my lows. You want to get into what your highs were? I, I basically said them all. Did I, you say all your highs? Yeah, I, I said, I put that I liked that he was a war medic. I thought that was cool, I guess. I put the shots were cool. I talked about the overhead raining shot and the bridge scene with the homeless man and going down the escalator and how the lights were like just kind of jutting evenly out of both sides of his head and then like the halo shape of the entrance of the tunnel over his head. Um, I liked the vanishing people, the homeless guy on the subway, the guy on the sidewalk. I like the guy that he trunks, that he slams in the trunk and then he goes to get him after and then he's, it's empty. Of course it's empty. That's what I mean. These people, I how many times are people going to disappear in this movie before you're like, okay, nothing I'm seeing is real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, there's at least four instances in this movie where people just disappear in like the first five minutes of the movie where you're like, okay, obviously nothing I'm seeing is real. Hmm. So I don't know. That's. And then I like the scene, I already said this again, but the guy, yeah, it's in the subway and, and one of the homeless guys, or I think it's the same homeless guy that he sees from the, under the bridge. And he goes, your brother needs your help. And Rezzy says, help. The subway comes and crashes. The car comes and crashes. Like, but it's like, it happens so fast that it's like, it is kind of, it's like a boost scare, I guess a little bit. Cause it's like, like, oh, you weren't expecting that. But it's, I don't know. I kind of like that stuff. I don't know. Um, and then the figures, like I said, in the speeding subway cars, like you see these shadowy figures that as the subway cars are moving, they're kind of moving along with the subway cars in like this ghostly fashion. It's kind of cool. I like that effect, I guess. But I mean, again, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with the production of the movie. I think that the movie is competently made in terms of it being like well shot and, you know, well edited for the most part. I think all the acting is pretty good. I mean, most of the actors. I thought some of the supporting characters were a little yeah Shitty. you know but the main guy the guy who plays jacob is actually his really doctor is there which was a little i don't know yeah it, I didn't like it, him. he wasn't the greatest yeah. thing. i'm like okay, but he sorry. wasn't written i mean that's the thing there's not a lot there's not a lot on the script there's not and a lot then on the, the page. homeless guy that he meets under the bridge that like you know your brother needs you and they're after you like he kind of he, his acting was a little like i don't want to say over the top but i could tell he was acting yeah. you know what i mean a little bit yeah, I, I think I think the main guy was pretty tour. good. Michael Ely, I think his name is. He was he was pretty good. Again, I don't think there's anything. All of that stuff was fine. It was it was it was fine. It was finally made. I guess it's just that the biggest problem with anything is is the script. If it you're going like, to remake it, do something. Yeah, reimagine you know, it. They didn't they didn't really do a whole lot with the script to elevate it to another level or make it any different. I mean, the adage that they always say is you can make a bad movie 
from a good script, but you can't make a good movie from a bad script. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing is that if you're starting with nothing, it's like there's there's nowhere for this to go. Um, I had a couple of highs, and again, this is just trying you know trying to be fair. Like I I wrote the opening scene, the post traumatic opening scene where the guy steps on the can and he thinks it's an IED. Mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of a cool scene, and then he runs into the alleyway mm-hmm. and he's laying there and he's looking up into the sky and you see, you see like the helicopter going in between the buildings in the alley. So he's like having like this, this um, flashback, scene. flashback to war. And then you see him take something. You don't know what it is at it's first. Yeah, yeah. And then these shadowy figures drag him away. It's like that scene was, it was actually a pretty cool opening scene. Mm-hmm. It was almost a, an opening scene that promised us a movie we weren't going to get, yeah. which is part of the problem. Yeah. I think. And um, I think that in the first half of the movie, because of maybe it be starting out in such a fashion, you were consistently waiting like, okay, like you're expecting that it's going to, um, fulfill something or I don't know like there's going to be a payoff of some sort I guess right, right. and there was, really no, end up there was no payoff um, yeah. as far as another high I wrote was updates I think updating from Vietnam to Afghanistan you know seems like a perfectly logical progression to modernize sure. the story yeah. like I actually think that that's starting in that way is not a bad idea I think that you know intrinsically the wars these two wars in particular make a lot of sense in in terms of like post-traumatic stress and what these soldiers have had to go through so i don't think that was necessarily a bad update it actually kind of makes sense instead of them trying to remake the movie and set it in vietnam era to set it in the afghanistan war era Mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense and they could have done something with it i don't think they did but as an update i have no problem with that one um, I, I, one of the things I wrote was it at least attempted a new twist, although to not, not to good effect. So, I mean, I give it credit that it tried not to do the exact same twist, but I don't think the one that they did really elevated the story or brought anything. What was the twist exactly in the first one? The whole movie that you've watched, anything that happens before the war, everything that's happening, like at him as a postman and him with this new girlfriend, mm-hmm. everything you're seeing, all the demons chasing him, all of that stuff is not real. In the, in the original film. All that stuff is him internally clinging to his life, trying to survive the wound that he got in Vietnam and eventually dying. And the whole point is that as, like, the, the Danny Aiello uh, speech that he gives about, if you hang on to your life, you're going to see devils ripping yeah, yeah, it yeah. away. So all these demons that are attacking him and he doesn't understand why, it's because it's him dying and he's trying to hang on to his life. And then by the end, when he finally accepts it, it's angels freeing him from the earth. So at the end of the movie, the twist is that it's him in Vietnam on an operating table and the doctor's was being the, like... Was the Jennifer Pena character ever really his girlfriend? Never really real. It was all, it was all part of this hallucinatory thing that was happening Fantasy. in his mind with him trying to internally fight to live. You know, I mean, I think that the the whole thing about the, the chemist explaining that part to him, like that could have potentially been the reality. Like, why did he get stabbed by one of his own soldiers, fellow soldiers? And then at the end of the movie, they talk about, there's like a little postscript thing that says something to the effect of like, it's been theorized that the government did give these drugs to soldiers, but it's Mm. never been proven. Mm. So that it kind of came from that kernel of an idea of like Mm. the government was giving these soldiers drugs and look how it fucking, what it did to them. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the twist in this, it doesn't, it's different, but it doesn't, it doesn't do anything to elevate the story, especially if the story is the internal conflict of someone, you know, living or dying. It just, it, there's nothing new here. There's nothing, if anything, it's like Tyler Durden and Jack. It's kind of, we're doing the same fucking thing. Oh, it's not really you, it's me. Like, I, it, it's just been done so many times now that it, it, it gets less and less effective each time you see yeah. it. Um, and then the only other high that I have for this is I wrote, it seems to respect the original film. I think the remakes in general tend to be fairly cynical. Um, this movie, watching it, I got the, I got the impression that the people who are making the movie, at the very, very least, respected the original film. I don't think they understood it. I don't think that they knew what to do with the material, but I think they at least respected it. Mm-hmm. So I, I give it a little bit of credit for not kind of shitting on it or or dragging it through the mud. I think they did the best that they could with what they thought they wanted to it sounds like I'm being condescending but like the makers of this movie probably don't look at it the way we do or or they at least I don't think they understood fully what made the the original movie great I feel like if they had a better understanding of what that made the original movie great they could have played more into that and a big part of what made the original movie great was that it was kind of in a weird way a character study it was really about 
Jacob. It was really like getting into that guy's mental state so that everything that he went through, the audience felt for. In this, it's like they take a guy, they barely develop him, and then they just throw a bunch of random CGI shit at him to try and be scary, and then they pull off this stupid twist that's been done a thousand times before, and they go, hey, there it is. And it's like, well, none of that shit is what made the first original movie good, and it's like, if you if you weren't going to try and tap into that, you probably had no real reason to try and remake it. Mm. But again, I don't think that they were disrespectful of the original film. They tried to in- incorporate scenes that were like some of the best scenes from the original film. It's just mm-hmm. they didn't know how to do it. That's yeah. at least how I feel about it. It wasn't 100% a success. It was not a success at all, I would say. Um, and I think that I think the thing about this movie is that like even when I say like, okay, like going through the Rotten Tomatoes and the IMDb, you know, they're low. It's a 3.4, it's a 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. But again, it's all relative because IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes, the scores are aggregated based on you know, how many reviews are available, how many people have watched it. This is a movie that just kind of died on the vine. It just went under the radar. Not even a lot of people have seen it. The problem is that the few people who have seen it have not liked it. Mm. And I think a big part of the reaction to the people who have seen it are like, this just wasn't necessary. There was just no reason to remake Jacob's Ladder. Mm. Like, why even try and do it? You didn't make it better. Right. This is not a bad movie to watch if you're morbidly curious. If you really, really love the original Jacob's Ladder, it's not a bad movie to watch just to kind of compare and contrast like why if anything it's going to make you want to re- I want to go back and rewatch Jacob Ladder sure. again because of most remakes I feel like make me feel that yeah way. I just it's just making me like nostalgic for how great like that movie compare. was yeah um but again I mean it, it's not I wouldn't say this was the worst movie of this year it was certainly rated almost among the lowest of this year like that's how we we got the recommendation for it was to look at you know movies of 2019 that were poorly reviewed or mm-hmm. poorly rated and it's bad it's not a good movie but it's certainly not the worst movie ever. It's just not nearly anywhere near as good as that original film. Sad to say. Yeah. True. And I guess based... I mean, I don't know if, if the the accurate scoring would be based on whether or not I have more highs or lows, but I do have more highs for this movie than lows. So but I'm saying you would I rate guess this that high? Mean, I guess wouldn't that mean that I would rate it as a high if I have more highs than lows? Let me put it to you this way. Would you recommend this movie to anybody? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's if anything, this is kind of a forgetful movie. It's a movie that people aren't going to really remember. Like it'll be one of those anomalies that, like, oh, they remade Jacob's Ladder, but nobody saw it, and the people who did see it didn't really like it. You know. And again, I I thought it could have been good if they made maybe a couple of changes, like. But they didn't. Yeah. They 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 rushed it, and they there were things that were good about it, but not good enough to make it good as a whole. I guess. Yeah. I does it does it stand like if you, if there was no original Jacob's Ladder, is this a movie you would recommend to anybody? I don't know, probably not. That's what I mean. Like, it just it, it's something that, like, was in front of your eyes for 90 minutes and then you don't think much about it afterwards. Or if you do think much about it, it's like, yeah, it wasn't so good. Hmm. All right, so let's, uh, we're going to do the coin toss for next week. As always, invite folks to write in to moviehilo at gmail.com. Yes, please do. Give us your high and low recommendations. Let us know um, any films that you think are good or bad, or except, I should say some of the best or some of the worst movies you've ever seen. Tell us why they're the best movies or why they're the worst movies you've ever seen. We'd love to uh, read some audience recommendations uh, for some of the next episodes. Yeah. So uh, we're going to do the coin toss. Heads, we're going high. Tails, we're going low. And we're, we got heads. So next week's movie is we're going high. We're going with um, Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Which is um, you, you've seen the trailers for this, right? Yeah, but like I thought we would do a movie that we, like Parasite or something. Well, this has been one of the highest rated movies of last year. Okay, didn't get any Oscar uh, creds, unfortunately, but been super, super highly rated, super, super well loved. And Ryan Johnson's a pretty good director, or somewhat controversial because people don't like a Star Wars movie, but everything that he's done since that or before that has been fucking awesome. All right. So I'm pretty psyched to watch it. Jamie Lee Curtis and looks crazy like cast. Tony looks like Collette's in it, right? Looks like kind of like Clue, but like. Yeah. With more of an edge to it. Yeah. Should be fun. Okay. All I'm right. down. Awesome. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks very much for listening to another episode of Movie High Low. We will check in with you next week with Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Yeah. See you then. Have a good week. If you're frightened of dying and then you're holding on, you'll see devils tearing your life away. But if you've made your peace, then the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth. It's just a matter of how you look at it, that's all.